about having common interests and common goals and a common bond for everyone. In this time when we need to stay apart to stand together, Custom Inc. has new tools that make it easy to design custom gear. Hey, y'all. Uh... Hey there, hey everyone. So first of all, let me just start off by um, thanking you guys for a lot of love that I have been feeling. A lot of people sending love, sending encouraging words, um, messages, friends, family, people I don't know that I still love and appreciate. So um, thank you all for that. Hi, Toyara. Hey, Yannis. Um, and so, as I said in my post that I just put up, if you saw it, I really um, don't even want, have a lot of words to say about this whole situation. Um, I um, really had a thought about it, and I was like, I should just go back and cut and paste a statement that I made at some other point and just post it and tell y'all to uh, just change the name to Brianna Taylor because it literally is just that unfortunate, you know, um, and and I feel like a Tatiana Jefferson was another case where, as you all know, she's a young woman in Texas who was shot through the window in her home while playing video games with her, nep her nephew, um, and I feel like I've made so many statements about that. And it's almost like the same thing over again, except that at least the officer responsible for, for shooting a Tatiana, uh, he was arrested and indicted. So, you know, it's, it's a little different, but it's still the same in terms of just this feeling that black people and black women, as we see, are, are under um, attack and we're under siege and the level of um, disrespect, the lack of accountability, uh, and just the danger that we face is so real. You know, it was so, it's, it's just so strong and so crazy that, um, you know, I just don't know. We just... It's just, it's just so clear. It's so thick and people see it. Everyone sees it. Everyone knows it. I'm sure there are people who are, you know, uh, even if people who are not even a part of our community, folks who, um, consider themselves to be conservatives, people who don't agree with some of our progressive values or, you know, they don't, they don't consider themselves to be a part of our community and we are often at odds or there's tension in terms of ideology. I'm sure many of them know that what happened yesterday is a miscarriage of justice because I've had some say to me, you know, this is kind of wrong, but, and they come up with a million excuses so I just wanted to come on here and not ramble, um, but to really just kind of talk through what I think is important for us in this moment and what we need to understand. Um, number one, and I've done lives in the past where I try to help people g gain clarity on what happened to Brianna. Um, and, you know, I have to, it seems like repetition is important because even in some of the things that we as supporters of hers and her family, um, some of the things we post and some of the things we say uh, is not, uh, it's not correct. And I want us to be, I want us to have the facts because the facts still, um, they, it, the, the facts in no way uh, changes what happened to her and the fact that Brianna was murdered and it was a crime, right? It's, it doesn't change it. So it's not like you have to uh, twist the facts or, you know, you want to try to hide certain things because 
you feel like if you give that information, it's going to change people's minds or opinions or what have you. The bottom line is that Breonna Taylor should not have been killed. Uh, and all of the circumstances around what happened to her um, were criminal. And uh, it was a total disregard for life. And what we see now is important for us to put it in context that yes, um, you know, it's a miscarriage of justice. It's a lot of different things, but it's also very strategic uh, what was done. Um, and it's, it's blatantly strategic if you really paying attention and you understand this system, how it operates and how uh, there are a number of individuals. Uh, and, uh, yeah, the system has... It's it's people who do what it, what they need to do to help the system remain. Um, and uh, Daniel Cameron is a part of that. So we'll talk about that second. Uh, but I wanted to just start out with, um, yeah, Daily Diane. We're going to talk about the settlement piece again. I think I did it before, but we're going to talk about it again today because I also see a lot of misinformation about that. So one, just to give a brief, very brief, hey Trey, I hear you somewhere in this house. I heard your voice. Um, I'll Just to give you guys a brief understanding of what happened to Brianna on that night and some of the issues surrounding her, the murder of Brianna Taylor. Number one, Brianna was not involved in any way in criminal activity. And in fact, there are some people who want to try to say that recordings um, that they put out, you know, they put out clips of uh, voice recordings or recorded telephone conversations between uh, Brianna and another young man by the name of Jamarcus. So this is a guy who she had a uh, friendship with um, and had dated um, based upon what I'm told very casually at one point, but that was her homeboy. It was her friend. It was her people, whatever he was, you know, I, and I don't even want to try to characterize the relationship because guess what? Brianna's not here to tell us exactly what the relationship was. Um, but at some point in her life, it's clear that she had an emotional attachment and relationship to this guy. And so um, there were recordings that just a couple of weeks before this decision yesterday came out in the press. Supposedly they were leaked and it was conversations um, about uh, uh, with Brianna and Jamarcus where in one time she said she loved him and she told, you know, it was a bunch of little things back and forth, you know, um, him calling her, he's calling her from jail, which is where most of these conversations, if not all of them were recorded. It was ba basically, um, you know, her, him calling from jail and talking about different things. I think there may have been a conversation where he asked her to bail him out, um, little things like that. Um, and then there may be, an, I think there's another conversation, I'm pretty sure, where he tells somebody that Brianna had his money um, and something like that. So, which, which of course we know that when the police went to the house, there was no money there. They didn't find anything. They didn't find money. They didn't find drugs. They didn't find any of that. And it's also important again um, to note that um, Brianna, uh, again, never, she did not have a criminal background had not been associated with drug dealing, had never been caught with drugs, um, uh, you know, and based upon uh, what I have learned being here and being around her, um, she she was not the type of person, she was a hardworking young lady um, who would have even been involved with drugs. But we all know, especially if you black living in America, and by the way, it's not just a black thing because White folks have all kinds of cousins, family members. Uh, I, the president uh, of the United States of America is friends with a bunch of criminals, P 
people who have been arrested for everything you could think of, um, including a man who he hung out with, who we know for sure was raping young girls um, and trafficking women. Okay, and, and those are his friends. And he's still the president of the United States. And no one has uh, uh, busted into his home and shot him or his wife. OK, or his children. And not that we want that to happen, but don't tell us about association because it, it, they all associated. OK, the, the mere fact that, um, you know, a bunch of these guys, senators and high level people are associated with, again, the Jeff Epstein's of the world associated with. Uh, uh, pharmaceutical owners who are pumping more drugs into our communities with pills um, than, you know, than, than, than any crack dealer on the street corner or whatever you want to call them would ever be able to get into our communities. Um, it's, it's absurd. And when you, as a black person, especially find yourself in conversation with folks and they start saying these things to you, and you start feeling like, oh, well, maybe, you know, she did have a friend or this and that. It's bullshit. Don't, you know, just, just, just don't. Even if you don't feel like you have the words to try to fight back or argue, you don't even have to. You can just literally tell those individuals that the president of the United States, his, his friends, all of them have been arrested or he's been, you know, trying to keep them from being arrested for criminal activity that ranges from perjury to harassment to collusion to um, sexual assault and sex trafficking. So stop. So we're going to put that to the side. Um, but Jamarcus has been in trouble um, and uh, he's, you know, he, I don't know that he's convicted of anything, but he's been in trouble he seems to have a troubled life. I've never met the young man. I don't know anything about him except what I've heard in the press. And also the fact that he himself has said that he was asked to uh, to implicate Brianna as a part of a potential uh, deal that the, the prosecutors were trying to give him. And he said no. OK, so um, he said he would never implicate her in something that she didn't do. Um, and, and by the way, you know, they're asking him to implicate her, right? They're asking this, this guy, Jamarcus, to implicate Brianna in a plea deal that would allow him to uh, escape jail time. Now, if she was even remotely involved in his drug business, even not if he was just a different type of dude, and it also speaks to what we know about Brianna and her um, and, and, and how how and the, and the type of person, her character, because if she was a grimy chick or was involved in his business or any of that, I believe that he would have had no problem. Um, you know, that he would have had no problem implicating her. Because it would have helped him. And she's dead. It's not like she's alive where if he implicates her, um, then he's got to deal with the back and forth, you know, and her potentially coming out against him and saying whatever. It's, it's not that kind of situation. We talk about a situation where all he's got to do is say that she was involved in his illegal drug activity and they would give him in this deal. We all saw it that they would actually reduce the charges and he would receive um, uh, probation. Why would he not want to do that? Unless, unless he knows that she doesn't deserve it because she was not involved in his illegal activity. And in fact, um, you hear her on the tapes, the tapes that they put out, right? The tapes that they put out um, yo, y'all, this guy that's president, I don't, y'all playing around. Anyway, we're going to talk about that in a minute. But anyway, um, he's on TV right now and 
Mm-mm. So um, anyway, the 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 tapes that they put out, their own tapes. You hear Brianna say to him in one of them, "You it makes me nervous when you come around. You got cops and this and that. It makes me nervous. I you know." I feel jittery or whatever she says, something like that gives me anxiety. So now anybody with common sense knows that if this is what, if, if, if you put these things together, right? The fact that she's telling him on the tape, when you come around, it makes me feel uncomfortable. Now, I just want to keep it 1000% real because I think we have to have conversations that are real and high level in this moment. I know for sure from my own personal life. Now, I'm not talking about nobody else. I'm talking about my life. I know how this goes. You got a friend. You meet the friend. When you meet the friend, you don't really know what the fuck they do. Like, you know, whatever. You meet them. You get involved with them and then you find out that they stay in trouble for this and that and they always got these different things going on. But by the time you realize this, you already really kind of like the person. So now if you like them or you you know love them, care, whatever, care about them. And now you're in a situation where you kind of trying to get away from them. Uh, but at the same time, you care about them and, you know, and, and, and there's a little back and forth and there's a struggle. OK, of of all of this, this relationship that you have with this individual that doesn't make you a candidate for execution. It just doesn't. I'm sorry. And I understand that we now have been told by the attorney general of the United States, I mean, of Kentucky, um, and it is backed up by a number of other individuals who run this country that. You can, in fact, be executed because you know somebody who has some issues, gets in trouble from time to time and, you know, and or or is always in trouble, whatever. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. The person is probably not good for me, uh, but I, I, I got into an emotional relationship with them and now I'm dealing with your bullshit as a part of my life that I don't even want to deal with, but it is what it is. It does not make you a candidate for execution. It does not. Because if in fact that is the case, then they should go to the White House right now and arrest the president of the United States. They should arrest Michael Pence for even being associated with the president. They should arrest uh, Giuliani, the former mayor of New York City, who is the attorney that works with and, and has dealt with and had phone calls and been in other countries, uh, being part of of all kinds of, 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 of treasonous behavior on behalf of this president. They should lock them up. They should lock them all up. They should lock up Donald Trump. I mean, not, not Donald Trump, Daniel Cameron for his association with Mitch McConnell who is a criminal in America to me, we, they should just lock up all of these people, right? Why don't we go into Daniel Cameron's life and find out who his family members are, who his wife's family members are, who his cousin may be, what, what, what corporations they support, uh, you know, who, who goes to dinner at their house and let's figure out whether or not these people have relationships with folks who have, who do questionable shit. Cause then if that's the case, lock them up. And if you lock them up and maybe kill a, a wife, a girlfriend, a kid or whatever along the way, then maybe if you do that to them, then maybe we'll say, okay, well then it's, it's fair. But we know that that's not what's happening. Okay, we know that the use of a no-knock warrant and the and and what happened in this particular situation with Breonna Taylor, we know that that shit only happens in our communities and to our people. I do not know if it's true that Daniel Cameron's uh, wife is Mitch McConnell's granddaughter. I've heard from very reliable sources that that's a, 
a t it's a tale that is not actually true. I don't know for sure, but um, we should check it out before we continue to say it and spread it because I don't know that it's true. There's definitely, you could come in a relationship. Hey, there's definitely a relationship there between Mitch McConnell and um, um, Daniel Cameron. And it seems like with the young lady as well, but it is not 100% sure at this point that they are um that she's a family member okay so let's see where do we go from here so i'm saying the association point okay so now what happens the night that brianna taylor was executed and i'm gonna try to move this along a little bit faster but the night that brianna taylor was executed to be clear Brianna was in her bed and that's this is another thing about us twisting on or or hearing something and it sticks in our minds so too so many of us have heard that Brianna was sleeping in her bed when she was killed that uh that that was out there in the beginning and it spread like wildfire and we are saying it and it is not true it is not true okay it's not accurate that Brianna was sleeping in her bed she was not sleeping in her bed. She was not. She was asleep. And, and it makes sense when you say she was asleep and she was killed. That is a fact. But she was not sleeping in her bed when she was shot. That's two different things. It was after 12 o'clock. She had gone to bed and she was watching a movie with Kenny Walker. They were her, That's her boyfriend. Who, of, who also does not, has not, ever had a criminal record, period, okay? So she was sleeping, she was laying down, they were watching a movie, she fell asleep, and she and before falling asleep, she told Kenny, turn the TV off. So they were laying down, They were, she was falling asleep, so she can get up and go to work, in which she was working on more than one job. The other lie that uh, people want to tell is that she was fired from being an EMT. She, did, she was not fired. She resigned her job as an EMT, but she was still working in the medical field, in uh, a hospital or some type of medical facility, still on the front line with COVID. Okay. And she was intent, she was uh, studying and, and, and preparing to become a nurse okay so she wanted to stay in the medical field okay these are important details so she's sleeping they hear or she is she okay so they hear a knock at the door a bang and they get up she gets up she starts getting dressed Kenny tells the story very clearly. Same story every time. She's throwing something on. They run into the door towards the door. And she's saying, Who is it? Who is it? Who is it? And there is no response on the other side. Okay. Saying the boyfriend shot. And let's make it tell her now. Okay. So she so she's saying, Who is it? Who is it? And there is no response outside of the knock now everybody in the con sorry all the people around are saying that they did not hear um shoot somebody is texting me that i have to respond to um they're saying that they did not hear a knock I mean, a, a response. They just heard knocks, but they never heard an actual response. Might have to cut y'all off for a second because this is important phone call that I'm getting. Sorry. All right. Hopefully when they call back, this other phone will ring. <sighs> yes, I'm in my bed because I can't even think straight today. But anyway, um, so they so so she, they hear she hears the knock. The banging is happening at the door. She gets up. She goes towards the door. She's asking, who is it? No one on the other side responds. Okay. 
So now what I said is that the neighbors and others have said they did not hear a uh, a response. And this is all kinds of neighbors. This is white folk, uh, you know, different people, men, women. They said they heard knocking, but they never heard anybody screaming, police, 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 police. Now, mind you, again, common sense would say that these they are right. They are executing a no knock warrant they would not have needed a no knock warrant specifically if their intention was to go there and announce themselves properly so it makes sense that kenny is saying that when they hit the door which of course they nobody's saying that they didn't remember no knock does not mean that no one knocked on the door specifically. It means that they don't have a responsibility to get to tell you who they are and then you have to respond or they can just not knock either and just bang the door and, and I mean, uh, uh, just um, uh, bust the door down. Right. So just understand that no knock has different types of uh, of things. Now, Alexandra. Before we before you go with the with this, what you said, which is what I said, that no one heard um, police announce themselves. I want to correct that, but it's not so much correction. It's just in the way in which I'm trying to tell the story here. So th- so so the no knock warrant that they applied for. Right. Um, it uh, it gave them the right. To bang to come through the door without having to identify themselves. So now if we know that's the case, then it makes sense that Kenny is saying no one said on the other side, police. No one said that. Now, all these people next door over here, over here say they heard no one announce themselves. But there is this one gentleman who happens to be a black man who is in the documentary. I don't know him, but I'm sure that I'm, I, don't, I don't know none of the legal stuff. I'm not a, a, a spokesperson for uh, Breonna Taylor's family. I am Everything I'm saying is what I have learned, but I could be wrong in some places, okay? Um, the person that's not, uh, excuse me, there's one man, um, as I said, he, he's a black man, who says that he heard... Uh, them say this is police police uh, something about police that's what he said but again there are multiple other witnesses who said they didn't hear it and again Kenny Walker is saying that he also did not hear anyone respond and say that it was police now let me just read what y'all are saying because No, the no knock warrant was for them and McCoy Media. McCoy Media, I hope you're still with us. The no knock was for them. I'm going to go into that in one second. She was. So the real K Joy, you asked this question was she sleep or not? And I was hoping, I hope I explained it clearly. Because I'm trying my best to go slow and be detailed. But yet I only have about 15 more minutes on here. So I have to go quicker. Um, She was asleep when they started banging on the door. She got up and she went to go to the door to see who it was. That's where the whole situation happened. When they come, they ram through the door and Kenny shoots one shot. They start shooting as well. And Brianna gets hit, um, they say six times, some people say eight times, but she gets shot a number of time and, times and she is, is, is dead, okay? So if, I, if you guys need me to explain that, I, again, I will. There was something else that I was looking at, the no-knock warrant. Yes, so the no-knock warrant was for Brianna's home. It was for Brianna's home because Jamarcus had been to the home and they they were following him and surveilling him. And so her home became a potential place that that the police were saying they were checking because they were looking for drugs. Okay, so so they the the, the search warrant was so it was not um, 
it was not an uh it was not that this cert okay there was i i can let me get this straight so in the beginning there was a narrative out there that the search warrant was for him and his house that they thought um he used to live at okay that was that was the narrative um so they were so they were they or no that they thought he lived at right that they thought he still possibly lived at and so they went there to search what they believe could have been one of his homes and he was already in police custody so that was an a, original narrative but the reality is that they issued a number of warrants for any place that they saw him go to especially if he had a bag or a box or anything like that and they were going to these different places um uh attempting to um search these homes to find drugs that they felt he was stashing in different places okay so uh there was another question here Um, no, there were no drugs or money found in the home. Okay. So I'll just go back to explaining what happened. So when the police show up, they, uh, we, we know the story, we know the knock, we know the whole thing. They say, who is it? Who is it? Uh, no response from the outside in terms of, uh, stating that it's police. They use the battery ram. They open the door Kenny shoots, fires one shot towards the ground and the police uh, shoot something like 30 plus times into the home um, and which bullets go into other homes. Uh, A woman uh, with a baby, I think a grandmother with a five month old baby, neighbors all over, there's bullets flying everywhere. Now, um, so let me just see where I want to go from here. The, the, so now the someone brings up Kenny and his record his uh, the recording of him speaking to the police. He's on the nine one one tape, which also lends itself to the uh, fact that he's saying the police never announced themselves. Now you and I know, right? You and I know very well, especially growing up in the in the, in the hood. That if you know that there's a cop on the other side of the door that's knocking on the door, if you ain't doing nothing wrong, if you don't, again, nobody in the house has a criminal record. Nobody has been implicated in any drug dealing. There were no drugs in the house. There was no excess money in the house. None of that. So if that's the case, if somebody says this is the police, why would you not go to the door and open it and say, how can I help you? What's going on? Right? The whole thing is they must not have said we're police. Well, how do we know that? Because when Kenny is on the phone, on the 911 call, I'm not talking about what he told me. I'm telling you the tape. You can get it yourself. You hear him saying, I don't know who's out there. He is screaming and crying on the phone. I don't Lord have mercy. I don't know what's going on. Somebody's banging on the door. I don't know who it is. Now they just, they, they bust the door in. I don't know what's going on. He does not know that it's the police still at this time. Okay. If he knew, he would have said the police came in the house. We didn't know it was them or we, you know, whatever, or, or, or we, whatever. I don't know. Whatever he could have said. It, I can't even make anything up because if he would have known that it was the freaking police, do you not think that he would have opened the door? Now, if he, if, okay, let's just say for the, for the sake of whatever the police want to say that he knew it was police on the other side of the door. Right. And he still chose to fire the shots. Well, why the fuck didn't he go out in the whole blaze? Because it's on at that point, right? Why would you just shoot once at the ground trying to, which is a warning shot, if you already know it's the police and if you're ready to pull your gun out on the police, it's on it at that point. We, we might as well go out of here blazing. Uh, am I making any sense to y'all? 
Okay. So Kenny says that it took a long time, you know, not a long, long time, but there was some time that it took him after the shooting and everything. Brianna's down. There's other phone calls. Like, he, you know, he's calling her mother. He's calling his mother. He's calling around. You know, he's crying. He's going through everything. He doesn't want to go outside because he's scared, you know, that they're going to kill him. He still, again, does not know what's going on. So he's he's scared to go out the door. He's going through the motions. They're saying, come out, come out now. And he realizes that Brianna is dying. You know, she probably at this point has already died. And he knows that he's got to go out in order for them to come in to give her some help or to do anything for her. So at this point, yes. So he, Kenny says that she was still alive for a moment where she said something to him, I think, about her mother. And so he... He he now um, knows that he has to go out there. There's cops everywhere. They're screaming and hollering at him. He starts walking out and there is actual audio and video of him being apprehended. Okay, so we put that all to the side. I got six, seven minutes or so. And uh oh, my live video got paused. Sorry. Can y'all see me now? Are we back now? Okay. Hopefully we're back. Okay. Um, so I can't even get into the body cam footage today because they lie so much. It's just so many lies. So now, uh, what do y'all want to talk about next? I told you this would be a conversation. So I'm trying to see where you all may have questions. Hey, Ashley. Right. Okay. So now let's go to, um, y'all want to, y'all asking me about the, 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 so then, okay. I don't want to go down the rabbit hole of, uh, you know, what happened when Tamika Palmer got the and all of that. Because if you want to know the FX documentary, uh, I guess the New York Times documentary, it's pretty good. It really helps uh, you to understand what happened that night. Tamika is in it speaking in her own words about what she experienced, not finding out that her daughter was dead in the house until too long afterwards um just you know all the things that happen kenny speaks in it so you should get it and watch it because it gives you a pretty good understanding of the whole thing someone just asked about the settlement again so let me say this about this settlement because there are a number of you who i have seen saying once they gave her the settlement um at that point uh, you know, once the family took the set settlement at that point, we know that, uh, you know, there was not going to be any justice, that the settlement was used to pay the family off. Now, listen. OK. Number one, the two things have absolutely nothing to do with one another, another why how can i say that how can i say that oh you know you can't say that because we've seen before if people get paid off the second and third the two things have absolutely nothing to do with one another why do i know that we have families where rare but it has happened officers are charged family gets zero dollars or a million dollars or two million dollars we have families, my friend Tori Russell from who uh, Ferguson, one of the leaders of the Ferguson uprising, uh, he was just reminding me of this the other day. You have families where um, they, they, ha they get a bunch of money and no indictments, um, rarely convictions. You have families where they get a few $100,000 and 
uh, no arrest or again, maybe an arrest. There are many different types of situations that happen. Many different types of situations that happen. And so there is no one model. There is nothing that proves that if you take settlements, then um, you know, you won't get a conviction, I mean, get a, a, a an indictment or you will. It's, it's it doesn't work like that, number one. But even in this case, it's more it's more clear. Because in this situation, in other situations that we, we've seen, it's usually been the city that is responsible for the investigation and the criminal charges. And it is also responsible for the civil suit. In this situation, those two things were definitely not associated because the civil case was in the city. Where the LMPD works, where their boss is the mayor, the state, total separate entity, was responsible for the actual criminal case. Which means that the state could have said, we're going to indict, and the city could have said two million, zero, uh, five million. There is no correlation between the two. It's just not true. It sounds good. It, and, and you want to say it because we're trying always to find a way to place the blame to even sometimes, unfortunately, blame families. But in this situation, the two things were not associated. And if in fact, so again, the city was handling the civil suit. The state was responsible for the actual uh, criminal side. And the two things have nothing to do with one another. Those two parties are not at the uh, 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 negotiation table together. None of those things are happening. But also we have seen a number of cases where people can get money, no charges, charges, no money. All these different scenarios have happened. OK, the other thing, the other thing, OK, is that. Um, I have to go do something, y'all. But the other thing is that. Um, um, no, the attorney general is not appointed. The attorney general is a seat that you have to vote for. Yes, you have to vote for it. So, no. So that I'm, that's going to be my last thing before I actually get off um, that I have to talk about. So I was saying that the city, city, civil and the city and the state and Daniel Cameron and what could have happened. Oh, the other thing is it is important to note outside of two things. Number one, outside of uh, the white woman who was killed by a police officer in Minneapolis where she was drinking, they say she was drunk, she she um, ran out into an alleyway, startled a black police officer, a black Muslim police officer, he shot her and killed her. He has received, I think, more than 10 years in prison, and she got, I think, $20 million, right? So that's one. The other case would be Corin Gaines, which is a young woman who pulled, had her gun and her son and they were barricaded in the house with the police officer in the doorway. Um, and then they shot and killed her. That family was awarded $38 million, but then it was uh, it somehow or another, it was overturned. Um, and now that lawyer may have a piece of paper that says that the family's supposed to get 38 million, but they're not, they don't have the money. So other than those two situations, huh? Hello? Okay. Other than those two situations, right? No one has received $12 million. So when people say, oh, well, they should have waited because it could have been more money. There's no precedent for that. That's actually not true, right? Like they got one, the, one of, if not the highest um, settlements that has ever, ever happened in terms of police accountability or police uh, wrongful death. And especially for a black woman, 
It has never happened. So while to us, it may seem like, well, you know, they should have got a hundred million. They deserve all the money that the world can muster up for what has happened here to try to give them something to deal with the pain and the frustration of what it is that they have been through and the fact that their child will never come back. They deserve way more money than what they have actually received. However, we still are working within realism and the reality of what we are, what we have in this moment. And that is not the case. A hundred million or all these things. And in fact, if they had waited to uh, accept the offer after Daniel Cameron's decision, it may have actually changed their power at the negotiating table. And so they had to take the settlement when they did for the amount that they took it for because it was historic in terms of the number and they were able to include reforms in the bill. Now, some people say, well, that don't mean nothing because, uh, the you know, it's all about implementation. It is. But this is one family that's doing their best. They're doing their best. It's like some of y'all say, well, y'all went down there in March and that don't mean nothing. It's not going to do. We're doing something. So this family did something. They went to the table and said, not only am I going to take this settlement, but I want you to put reforms in the package. So at least we know we did our job by demanding that you all do something, not for Brianna, because Brianna is gone, not for me, because I got money and now I could go and live my life in a different way. I'm trying to get you to do something so that the next Brianna Taylor doesn't happen. I'm trying to stand in the gap to make sure that we use my daughter's life to try to help somebody else. Yep. And they, they they need to be on the uh, patio. It's supposed to be an outside shot. Okay, thank you. Um, you know what I'm saying? So just come and get me when they're ready, okay? Nobody's listening. Um, so, is it making any sense to y'all? Like, are you getting why y'all have to stop? saying well once they took the money then you know please stop saying that because it is not accurate it's not accurate and to go over it one more time okay if they had waited to take the settlement or waited to negotiate the settlement more than likely this decision would have came out and they would have been in a uh, in a in a lesser position or in a dis at a disadvantage to be able to get anything okay or to get as much as they were able to get which happened to be historic and it also happened to have reforms in it that you can only hope people will do what they are supposed to do we don't know, but at least they tried and they did something that most people would not do, okay, or just wouldn't even feel they can do, but they had attorneys who understood the larger goal here, who also f- understand this movement, who work closely with activists and leaders on the ground, and they came up with something. And they said, we, we, we of course are going to take the money because we deserve it, because the number is historic, because uh, Brianna deserved it, because everything you could think of, because we're supposed to get our civil justice and our criminal justice. We're supposed to be able to get both things OK, we're supposed to be able to 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 if something like this happened uh, as a mother, I shouldn't have to go to work for the system. I should be able to build a foundation that deals with issues in the community that my daughter cared about. OK, so I deserve the money. But at the same time, I am demanding that a part of this settlement include some accountability measures and some changes so that. So that, so that not only am I helping to protect um, another child, right? Not only am I trying to protect another 
another person's child or another individual, but also because of the fact that you're even willing to entertain these reforms, you are saying to the world that you know there's some problems here that need to be dealt with. So you are acknowledging that there's some shit that needs to be cleaned up. So I don't understand, you know, I'm going to move on off that topic. And I'm going to get to my last point because I have an interview to do and this is important. All of us are frustrated. Okay, Lanita, you must be talking about something different on there. All of us are frustrated. All of us are hurt. I am, I'm, you know, people I keep seeing y'all ask me on here. How am I? I'm devastated. I can't be any more devastated than Tamika Palmer. Like, so, you know, I got to suck it up because how she feels, I, I you know, I, I, I don't have that. I, I can't, I, I don't feel that. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I have no choice but to pull it together. Um, oh, the Joshua James thing. That's the part that I literally have been on the phone with attorney Baker, Lanita Baker, who was speaking. She's in here commenting. Her name is um, diva uh, underscore attorney. She's a national treasure. She's my friend who I just met when I came to Kentucky in May. Um, and now, sorry guys. And now she's one of my closest. Okay. Sorry guys. And she will always be, um, yes, Larry, she is incredible. Uh, I have been calling her over and over. And as soon as she picks up, I just say to her, I don't understand the Joshua James piece because this man lied on this no knock warrant application. Are you telling me that that part is not relevant? Like, how do we just ignore that in order to obtain a warrant to go into her home in the first damn place, there were lies told and the damn post office said it was a lie. So I'm just trying to understand how does that not become a central part of the shit? Like, what are we talking about? I don't believe it. It is it is the most unbelievable. I just, I, I, I can't even get into it with y'all because I got to go. But um, that part, I just, so when you keep asking me how I'm doing, I'm struggling. And I believe that. Um, you know, Lanita says that she does not even know or believe that the she doesn't know whether or not the perjury piece was even presented to the grand, grand jury. And so that's why we have to demand, guys, that we get the grand jury minutes because we want to know what was presented. We want to know what they heard. We want to know whether the perjury, perjury piece was even um, uh, presented. We want to know what was presented. What did they actually present? I need to know that. We need to know that. We deserve to know it. Um, and so that's something, it, it, you know, and uh, the attorneys have not said that they are requesting those minutes. They may be, I don't know, I can't speak to it, but I know that from an activist perspective, we definitely would like to see the minutes so that we will understand um, what was presented. But I just want to say this and I'm closing this out. What happened yesterday, while it is devastating and while so many of us are hurt and we should be, and yes, I still agree, we need to be in the streets like we have never been in the streets. The same way that we were for George Floyd and, and all the cases, the Mike Browns, the Trayvon Martins, all the brothers, all the men that deserved us to be in the streets. We need to turn up and be in the streets for Breonna Taylor, for a black woman. Yes, we need to be out there. No, it's not the end of, there is much work to be done. And when you stand up for Breonna Taylor, you're standing up for yourself. You're standing up for other women. You're standing up against the system and you're basically saying to just this entire the government as we currently see it, that this is some bullshit and that we are not going to sit back and allow y'all to have business as usual while black people do not have usual justice. OK, there is a problem and we need to be in the streets. Right. And yes, we need a boycott. We damn sure need a boycott. But y'all got to be ready to do it because I look crazy when I call for us not to support certain brands or certain things or, or we call for people 
not to shop or to do whatever the boycott may be. And black folks start arguing back and forth. What that got to do with anything? I don't understand. I need to be able to get my chicken, my this, my bourbon, my whatever. We that That's what happens. So don't say strike, strike, and this, that, and the third. And don't understand that it's not going to just be you. You can't say I'm striking by myself. You have a responsibility to go out and educate everybody about what it is. And if we say we're not going to work for a day, we're going to shut this damn economy down, or we're going to stop buying bourbon, or we're going to stop. We have to be unified enough to actually do it. Because otherwise, when I call it and y'all don't do it, you know what happens? I look like my leadership is not that strong. So I am not going to thank you um, 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 uh, uh, people on the live. Anyway, um, I am not about to look stupid and, and be out here calling for something that we're not going to do. So when y'all get it together and y'all are serious about it and we're not going to all have to sit up here and argue back and forth and y'all telling us all this other bullshit about why it's not fair that people shouldn't have they so-and-so and then people want to be like, well, what about the jobs? Listen, every single time that there has been a revolution in this country, people have been hurt. Un it's, it's an unfortunate part of what happens. People have been hurt. But I promise you that if we decide that we're not going to spend our money in a store or with a brand or we're going to not go to work or whatever it is, I promise you with everything in my heart, mind and soul that the system will correct itself because the only thing that these people care about is disrupting their money. And they care about violence. And I'm not a supporter of violence. I don't want us getting killed and I don't want us killing anybody else. The point is we don't want to die. And in order for us to maintain our safety, we've got to use our money to make our point. But I didn't get on here to talk about that. So that's another thing. But I keep seeing y'all say strike, strike, strike. Let me know when y'all ready. Because I've been striking. I still don't wear Gucci and I got a box or two, uh, two, of a bunch of Gucci shit and I would never put it back on. I'm trying to figure out what am I going to do because I don't want to give it to anybody else to wear it either. So I, I don't, you know, I, I, I'm still not wearing Gucci and we had to argue and go back and forth and Negroes walked up and, and, and worked with Gucci and this, that, and the third, which they were able to get some reforms done uh, or not reforms, but some resources for organizations and all of that. But still in all, if we're going to say we're going to strike, we got to all say when they call us and say, will you work with us? No, we won't. None of us. Nobody. We won't support you. We don't want shit. We just going to tear down your entire establishment until we start getting some justice. That's what we have to do. But OK, put that to the side. Last two minutes. Here's the thing. Daniel Cameron made a very, very, very strategic decision. OK, he made a very, very, very strategic decision. This is not just about. Racism, of course, racism is a part of it and black people can help to uphold white supremacy and racism. So his black face means nothing. He actually is a very similar to those individuals who helped to enslave black people uh, 401 or some people say 465 years ago, depending on how you look at the history. So uh, black folks have always participated in the demise and the oppression of other black people. And he is one of those individuals. Um, and so, um, so, so, so that, so that, that is over here. Okay. Uh, he made a strategic decision. The decision is not just his alone. The decision is that the Republican party has decided to double down on securing their base. They could not afford to try what the Democrats often do to um, try to capitulate in any way or try to throw a, a bone across the aisle to see if they could win some votes from black people or liberals because they decided to indict the cops. They could not do that. OK, because it's too unsure whether or not any of us would actually depart from 
uh, the, the, either the Democratic Party or from our independent status or just from deciding we're not going to vote at all. It's not sure. It's too, too unsure about what we might do. So what they did was they doubled down on their own people. They doubled down on their base and they did not want to confuse it. They did it right. Exactly. The police unions, um, the FOP, all of these individuals have endorsed Donald Trump. They need to win an election and they could not shake that up in any way going towards this election. So they double down. They make sure their base is secure. They make sure their people are comfortable. They didn't want to create a situation. Not that we think anybody would have voted for um, would have voted for uh, Joe Biden. But what could have happened is that people just got pissed off and decided that they weren't going to vote at all. And so what they said was, you know, it's too it's too unsure. See, on our side, whatever our side may be, because half the time I'm pissed with the Democrats also. But on our side, which is I want to say the side of righteousness, right? Us as a people, not a Democrat, a party, but just us as pe as a people, we are trying to be on the righteous side, right? That doesn't mean we always do everything right, but it means that we believe in righteousness and equity and justice, right? So with us, we get so caught up in being woke and being, um, you know, we, 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 we're all morally, uh, uh, what do you want to call it? We want to have good morals, a uh, good moral compass, and we want to try to do things in the right way. And of course, we want to be respected and we want to look back in people's histories and check to see what they did before, which they've done some really bad things and they've hurt a lot of our people. And so now we've, we're have we making these decisions about whether or not we should vote for these folks and this and that. We're doing all this, a bunch of bullshit, even though we might be right on, even though, the yes, the righteousness, even though we might be spot on, even though in this particular moment, it's not fair for us to have to be in a situation where we feel like the individuals that could become or that we're being asked to vote for, we're being asked to support, still don't get us, still have not moved far enough to the place where we need them to be. This is all true. This is all true. But in this moment, in this particular moment, not voting is not an option because those people drew a line in the sand to tell you that we don't give a damn about black women. We don't care if we shoot you in your house. We don't care about black people. We don't care about you being on the streets, you protesting, you screaming, you hollering, you hurting, you crying. The mama, they, they, they got Tamika Palmer to drive all the way from where she lives in Louisville, an hour away to Frankfurt after her attorneys asked them, please do not make her drive a distance where she's got to drive back with bad news with her heart broken and they still had her to go all the way an hour away to hear that the walls got more justice than her daughter who got no justice at all these people don't give a damn about you and me and our debates back and forth about whether or not you know this person is right and this and that and the third we have got no choice but to turn out in this election like we have never voted before this man is sick he is insane okay he is running our country and he is sick and insane and he has people like daniel cameron that are willing to back him up against his own black mother because they could have ran into his mama's house and killed her and he does not care they want power. They want to win, Tiffany. They want to win. And you and I, we better get our shit together and win. And you know how you know how when you was in the grocery store, and it's the last thing I'm saying, I really got to go. You know how you were in the grocery store when you was a little kid and your mama told you, I'm going to still get you these shoes because you need them for church. And I'm gonna, we going to walk around in here and act, and act oh, I said grocery store. So I'm going to get you this, whatever it is that you eat. Cause you know, you still need your snacks at home and I'm going to, I'm going to be cool right in this store, but you acting up when I get you home, I'm going to tear that ass up. Okay. We all had that. We all had it. You went to the store with your mama, you acted up. She still got your shit. 
and she tore that ass up when you got home. That's what we have to do to Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. We got to send them to the White House. We got to go ahead and vote for them. We got to register Lottie Dottie and everybody. Get them where they need to be. And then when they get in there, the same way we in the streets now, we got to be in the streets then and kick their ass in the shape to where they are going to do what they need to do for our communities. That's the facts. I said all the other stuff that I said for the last hour to get to that point right there. So I hope y'all took it. I hope it makes sense. I don't know if I got to come back and talk about this again, but I am devastated, heartbroken, and yet still not surprised because we never, ever, ever, ever get the justice that our people deserve. We get some laws changed. We get some things done, but we're not getting justice. And we got to figure out how to do that. And I believe that the next administration should be, should be uh, the Biden-Harris administration so we can force them for the first time to make the changes that need to be made. Peace, y'all. I love y'all.